Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 749. I'm Kevin Coulson, and I'm here with Susie Lee from Anglican Futures, and we're going to talk about Lambeth. All right, thank you for sitting down and watching us talk about Lambeth 2022. A lot's happened. This is Thursday. Um, Tuesday, they had a, a, a tumultuous de decision. Well, it was Justin's decision. Wednesday, they had a tea party and they went to London and planted a tree. Oh boy. And so we're gonna sit down and talk about what's happened and some of the implications which happened. Susie, first of all, how are you doing? Yeah, okay. Um, I didn't go to London with the a thousand of people on their buses to talk about sustainable development. Um, had a day off instead, so feeling a lot more refreshed today. Mm -hmm. All right, so the implications of what Justin did on Tuesday are starting to, to f I'm going to say fumigate around Lambeth and certainly around the world, that there's kind of an understanding now that there's dual integrities. There's the integrity of Lambeth 110, which exists as a historical document and an understanding of the teaching of scripture uh, in the Anglican Communion. Also existing in equal platform is the new provinces who have taken on a different understanding of sexuality within the church, allowing for same-sex marriages and same-sex blessings. And I, I, I'm curious to see who understands that and stuff like that. Uh, explain how this all happened, if you could, Susie. Well, Tuesday we had the call um, about human dignity. Uh, so we had two letters over lunchtime. Um, the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, put out a letter explaining where he was coming from prior to um, their, the, the bishop's discussions that afternoon. In it, he um, outlined the idea that really it was possible and it was important for, um, for unity for us not to argue about this issue and to just recognize the fact that we were in a situation where there, were, were, there was a plurality of views um, and that that was a, a good way forward. Um, at the same time, um, the Global South Fellowship of Anglicans, the GSFA, uh, put out uh, their own Lambeth call, um, uh, the, their own Lambeth call, which is an affirmation of Lambeth 110. And it's really worth reading. It's it's a, a carefully crafted, uh, beautifully written um, call. It's what really should have been written uh, originally. Uh, so we ha that was lunchtime. And then the bishops went into their meeting and uh, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury felt he must make sure that he spoke to people. So he talked to everyone, told them uh, what he thought, just in case they hadn't read the letter and uh, then they sat down, they prayed, they talked to each other and at the end of the, that they announced there wasn't going to be a vote. I think we talked about this a little bit on Tuesday. So oh, yeah, yeah. The vote is, yeah, there was no vote um, and we spoke just after that had happened. Mm -hmm. uh, now people have gone to London, they've had their time there and um, people are just beginning to reflect really on the implications for the Anglican Communion, uh, for their individual province, uh, for their diocese, for their church, um, as to what it means to be living in a communion where plural truth um, has become an accepted option or yeah, not well, option, it's become the reality of the Anglican Communion. If, yeah, if I were a liberal, I would be ecstatic. Finally, we don't have to talk about this anymore. Justin Welby, Pope Justice, Justin, uh, has decided for us that this issue is a equal dual issue uh, of acceptability within the Anglican Communion. It, it, now, this is as, as, as Kevin reads it. In my little lay eyes, I, I see that um, unbiblical and biblical identity around marriage has been assumed by Justin Welby to be equal, equality. And if I were liberal, I would be extremely happy because the issue's been decided now. We can go home uh, and uh, 
a parade in rainbow as long as we want. And okay. Now, I want to know what the Global South thinks about this, Susie. Have you got any inkling at all what the, the bishops from the Global South think about this? Well, um, I think they're probably meeting as we as we speak. Um, there's a, going to be a press conference tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The conversations that I've had with individual um, bishops from the Global South, it's clear that there is a yeah a, a recognition that what's been said really makes the whole issue of marriage, the whole issue of same-sex marriage, uh, uh, adiaphora, things indifferent, and um, and really, if that's a thing indifferent, then everything is a thing indifferent. Um, it was interesting today we had an ecumenical debate, interfaith debates, and um, you know the one question that you want to ask is: is that are there any boundaries? Are there any boundaries uh, to um, what is uh, not a thing indifferent? What is not adiaphora? And in fact, one of the Welsh bishops uh, just talked about the fact that we needed to keep extending the boundaries. Um, in order that uh, we would be able to meet the next generation. Yeah, because so we have I, I tiny. Mean, the, the next generation is about uh, transgenderism. It's about uh, plural marriages where there's more than one uh, person in that relationship. And if the church could just, you know, early on, right now, accept that and promote that, that would be a, a great step forward for the liberals in the church. And what an opportunity Justin would have right now to say, listen, let's rewrite the book today. And I think it's not that necessarily that he has that agenda, that that's what he wants to do, but he has this huge uh, uh, belief in the need for the visible unity of the church. That was what we were told today. Uh, there's not just a climate change emergency, there is an ecumenical emergency. Um, we must uh, work together for the visible unity of the church. Um, it doesn't matter what goes on functionally within the church. We can have functional diversity as long as we have visible unity, which I think is why he's been talking so much about everybody coming to uh, Lambeth and walking together, that phrase that we've heard over and over again. Um, but I think one of the things that the Global South uh, bishops are saying is that um, it's, it was a phrase that Archbishop Bardi used, yes, we may have gathered together, but we can't walk together. And I th wouldn't be surprised if we don't hear that uh, phrase again uh, tomorrow at the Global South uh, press conference and in any statement that they put out. Now, I've not seen this written anywhere, but do you think the uh, Global South regrets going to Lambeth after all that's happened? I don't think so. I think from the conversations I've had, I think they feel that, um, I think oh, it's difficult. Um, do they regret going? I think they feel that they've been able to meet together and that's been an important thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think not just the Global South bishops, I think an awful lot of bishops are feeling that the, the way that the whole, whole conference has been organized, um, to mean that they have a lot of time being talked at and very little time to talk together um, is a frustration and I think that's across the board. I spoke to one bishop today who said it's, it, is, um, it is surprising that we have just one and a half hours uh, to talk with one another um, about big issues. These are, these are important issues that can't be decided in an hour and a half. Early on, it kind of looked like Lambeth had l lost the message and lost the ability to control the bishops. Do you think that they've recontrolled the message now and that they've uh, certainly had time to regroup and hold the bishops um, to where they want them at, at, at arm's length? Uh, I just think once you've said that all we have is plural truth and some kind of diverse unity as whoever's got the microphone is the person who is giving out the message and I don't think that any of those in charge of the Lambeth conference uh, will accept that there are two communions meeting at Lambeth um, despite the fact that you know we've got two different communion services going on mm -hmm. um, in the morning 
we've got two different views of truth. We've got two different views of biblical authority, um, which works its way out, not just in marriage, but in, in priorities. So um, I sat down with the Bishop of Singapore today. We were talking about mission. He was talking about the need to get back to the bread and butter of the gospel. He was talking about the church planting that they're doing. Um, similarly, other bishops that I've spoken to within the Global South, that's their passion. Um, what do we want to do? Yes, we may be fight facing uh, bullets, we may be facing starvation, but what people need alongside peace and um, alongside food, actually what is a bishop's job? A bishop's job is to, to feed the people the word of God mm -hmm. and to teach them um, the truth, whether it's in a refugee camp, whether it's um, in a, in a you know, high rise block in Singapore, their desire is to teach people um, the word of God and to see people grow as Christians. And that's really exciting. That's going on in one part of the communion. In another part of the communion, we've got climate change, um, we've got planting trees, we've got um, missions of uh, uh, ecumenical unity uh, based on, I don't know quite what. <laughs> and it's, and, and it's as, as it, we, we, they've had to admit They've had to admit that uh, the Global South is the majority of the communion, um, but they're not prepared to say what a tiny minority of the communion is, uh, is wanting this progressive agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard today from the Scottish Episcopal Church, you know, one of the smallest churches in um, the Anglican communion, one of the, the churches that has changed their um, uh, doctrine of marriage, well, their latest stats came out this week. 7,644 people, average weekly attendance, not of a diocese, but of the whole province. Less than 8,000 people in the province of the South, of, of um, the Scottish Episcopal Church. You know, and I was talking to someone today who said, you know, it's the Bishop of Singapore who said, you know, I, I think I gave you a wrong stat because I've been told that his diocese was 100,000. He That's said, no, you must, you, you've got your facts wrong. We're, a, you know, he said, we're a small diocese. Singapore's a small diocese um, in terms of numbers. And it does include Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, Indonesia, and somewhere else as well but they have a a, a diocese of about thirty thousand. he says okay. he said you must be have been thinking about kung ching because that's got 180,000. Wow. Uh -huh. and here we have scotland here yeah. with with seven bishops um and you know a, a thousand bishop a thousand people each all right we have used 13 valuable minutes of your time uh i'm gonna let you rest up before tomorrow's press conference and then right after that we i hope we can sit down and record and find out what the global south uh said in regards to what's happening at lambeth especially after this news of mutual flourishing dual integrities around uh same-sex marriage and heterosexual marriage so thank you again Susie, for all your time <laughs>